Today is all about exponents. So we've been working with exponents before. So if we think about what we've done before, when we were working with exponents, if I had the same basis, but my exponents were different and I was multiplying them, then all I had to do is take that base of A and I just had to add those exponents. And we also have worked with division before with exponents, but it's always if the bases were the same and I was dividing with two different exponents, all I had to do is take that base and subtract the exponents to get the new answer. So we've already worked with this. So today we're gonna add on to your knowledge. So what's happening today is now we're gonna have two different variables or numbers inside the parentheses. And we're gonna have a single exponent on the outside. Now what this is actually called is the power of product property. And the way that this works is you can think of each of the individual pieces inside the parentheses as their own number, and we can apply that exponent to each of those individual parts. So if I had a times b inside the parentheses to the m power, that would become a to the m power times b to the m power. So let's add, uh, add this into it an actual problem. So if we had negative 6x inside our parentheses, and all of that is going to be raised to the third power. Well, what I would do is I would take negative 6, and I put the third power with that, and then I take the x and put the third power with that, and I'm always multiplying the two together. So now I know a negative times a negative is a positive, a positive times a negative is a negative. So first I always figure that out, whether my answer is gonna be positive or negative. And I know that six to the third power is six times six times six. So when I get that, I get actually negative 216. So I'm done with that coefficient. Now I'm gonna go for my variable. So I have x to the third power, I don't know what x is, so I just add that in as x to the third power. So my final answer would be negative 216 x to the third power. Now, sometimes it's going to look a little different. Sometimes we're going to have a number inside the parentheses that already has an exponent to it, and then we're going to take another exponent to it. So if I had a to the m power, then raised to the n power, the way I work that is I take that a and I actually multiply those two exponents together. So let's actually do this. If I had three to the second power raised to the negative fifth power, well then I would take three to the two times negative five, which becomes three to the negative 10. And then I know if I have a negative exponent, I take the reciprocal and that exponent follows it. So I get one divided by three to the 10th power. Let's do something with a positive exponent. If I had y to the third power, then raised to the second power, I would take y to the three times two as my exponent, therefore I get y to the sixth power. So not difficult actually to, to do, we just have to remember those rules. Now we also have another rule for division. So say inside my parentheses, I have a number divided by a different number, and outside the parentheses, that's raised to a power. Well, again, I can think of those as two individual parts. So I'm gonna take my numerator and raise it to the power and my denominator and raise it to the power. So let's try it with an actual problem. If I had negative three divided by K in my parentheses raised to the fifth power, that means I have negative three to the fifth power divided by K to the fifth power. And I know a negative times a negative is a positive, times a negative is a negative, times a negative is a positive, times a negative is a negative. So I know that answer is going to be a negative. And if I take 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, I get 243. Now I work on the denominator, k to the fifth power. Well, I don't know what k is, so I just have to leave it like that. So my final answer would be negative 243 divided by k to the fifth power. So kind of a hint for you when you're dealing with negative numbers inside those parentheses. If you have a negative number and the power or the exponent is an even number, your answer is always going to be positive. If you have a negative number inside that parenthesis and that exponent is going to be an odd number, like um, one, three, five, seven, 
your answer is always going to be a negative. So it's just something that I know. You can always figure it out by hand, but it's just kind of the rule um, if you can remember it. Now, let's apply this. Where are we going to see this in the real world? Well, number one, we're going to see this with scientific notation. So if I had 6 and 1 tenth times 10 to the second power, that's in scientific notation format. But then I'm going to raise that to the fifth power, and we've never seen that before. Well, this is where I'm going to apply my, my rules, because I'm going to take that fifth power and I'm going to apply it to the six and one tenth, and I'm going to take that fifth power and apply it to, to the ten to the second power. So here you can see that I've written those out. Well, six and one tenth to the fifth power, when I put it into my calculator, it's a really long number. I write the whole thing. Don't round. We never round unless we're going to the final answer. And usually in scientific notation, we don't round anyway. So where I'm going to apply my power of products um, principle is right here where I have my uh, 10 to the second power. So here I'm going to do 10 to the second power times the fifth power that becomes 10 to the 10th power. But I know this is scientific notation, so when I look at that, that's not in proper format. In order to have it in proper format, I have to have that decimal right after that first number. So it means this is a positive number. I need to move that decimal one, two, three more places over. That means I have to add three more places to that exponent, so this becomes my final answer. So don't forget your basics of scientific notation. Now it also works if we have a negative scientific notation. If I had 10, uh, 9 and 6 tenths times 10 to the negative first raised to the fourth power. Well, I'm going to take that fourth power with 9 and 6 tenths, and I'm going to use my calculator to calculate that. And then I'm going to take that fourth power and multiply it by this um, negative uh, first power. When I do negative 1 times 4, I get negative 4. But I look at that format, it's not in the correct format. And this is a negative exponent, which means it's a decimal. It means I moved my decimal way too far. I got to move it backwards, which is going to reduce the number of exponents that I'm going to have there. So I'm going to move it back 1, 2, 3 places, which means I've got to add 3 more to that exponent. So my final answer becomes 8 and 49 hundredths times 10 to the negative first power. So we can see that this becomes very helpful when we're working with scientific notation, but that's not the only place it becomes helpful. Let's turn this board over and I want to show you what happens when we start to do conversion factors with area and volume. Okay, so we know that we can always convert uh, any uh, unit of measure. So if I wanted to convert five feet into inches, that's a one dimensional conversion. So here's my five feet. It's not that I'm changing the five feet, I'm just changing the unit of measure. And I know that there are 12 inches in every foot. So if I multiply five feet times 12 inches, it's going to tell me that there are 60 inches in that same five foot area. And we've done one dimensional conversions for a long time. What we haven't really done is two dimensional and three dimensional ver conversions. And when we're talking about that, we're really talking about converting with area or converting with volume. So the only thing that really changes is we have to remember our dimensions change. So if I'm going to take that same conversion, I want to do five feet squared. Well, the second I see feet squared, I know that we're dealing with area because that squared is with that unit of measure. So when I look at that area, I'm thinking of a square. And it's going to be a five foot by five foot square. Well, all I'm doing is I'm changing from feet to inches. Okay, I'm not changing the size of this figure. Well, think about this. For every foot, there's 12 inches along your length and 12 inches along your width. That means I have to do a 12 by 12, which is 144 inches per that first foot. But then my second foot would also have 144 inches, my third foot 144 inches, my fourth 144 inches, and my fifth 144 inches. So we can see that we're squaring that. So if I don't want to draw the picture and I just want to do the conversion, well, I'm going to take that five feet I'm going to multiply it by 12, but I'm going to square that 12 because that's getting me my 144 inches there. When I do the squaring of 12, 
that's 12 times 12 for 144. Now that's only one foot for the 144. I want the five feet. So I'm gonna do five times 144. So my, my conversion from five feet squared to inches squared would be 720 inches squared. Same amount of space, just changing the unit of measures. So let's go one step further. Let's go from two dimensions to three dimensions. If I'm looking at three dimensions, I'm looking at volume. And I know it's three dimensions because I see five feet cubed. And if you see feet cubed, it's a three-dimensional figure. So we can see that I have my dimensions, my length, my width, and my height are all five feet. I'm not changing the figure. I just want to change the feet to inches. Well, in order to do that, I know that I need to multiply by 12 inches cubed. That means I'm multiplying by 12 times 12 times 12, which is 1,728. Mm -hmm. But that's only for one foot of it. I need all five feet, so I'm gonna multiply that by five. So five feet cubed is the same thing as 8,640 inches cubed. Just a change of measurement. Now, sometimes our measurement is gonna go from uh, a bigger measurement to a smaller. Notice I'm going from five feet to inches. So I went from a bigger measurement to a smaller measurement. When I do that, I always multiply because I'm gonna have more inches than I do feet. But sometimes you're gonna go from a smaller unit of measure to a bigger unit of measure. So meters is a much smaller unit of measure than kilometers. And when I'm gonna make that conversion, I'm not gonna multiply them I'm actually going to divide. So you have to look at your units of measure to see what's happening. So when I go to set that up, I know that I have to do 45 divided by 1,000 squared. And when I come out at the, my ending answer, it's a large decimal. So not everything is always multiplying. You gotta think about what is actually happening with the units of measure. Same thing happened down here. I went from millimeters to centimeters. Okay, that's a smaller unit of measure to a larger unit of measure. So when I'm doing that, I know I have to divide. So kind of the rule of thumb, if you're going from a bigger unit measure to a smaller, you're always gonna multiply. If you're going from a smaller unit of measure to a bigger unit of measure, you're always going to divide. And it doesn't matter whether you're in a two-dimensional uh, conversion or a three-dimensional conversion. So you can see that exponents are all over in math, and we can use it with scientific notation, we can use it with conversions. So today your job is to just practice these rules of exponents and then apply them into some real-world problems. I know you'll do well. Good luck.